Hey, what's up everyone? So in this video, I'm gonna show you a very cool ace trick. This is called the Apex Aces. So the idea is one at a time, each of the aces with just a little motion like that, vanish from the pack, just like that. The ace of clubs, completely gone. Okay, that was a little fast. You didn't know what to expect. Watch again with the diamond, very quick, just like so. And it's gone, okay? Heart, don't blink. This is gonna happen really fast, just like this and the spade as well vanishes from the pack. Completely gone, nowhere near the top, nowhere near the bottom. All four aces vanished. By the way, at the end of this video, I'm gonna show you a really cool way to bring the aces back, so stay tuned for that. All right, let's talk about this trick. This is a lot of fun to do. I love 4 ace tricks. It's one of my favorite, you know, categories of card tricks. Uh, so I especially like this one. You're gonna remove the four aces. Now you can do this as a standalone trick or you could you know, kind of segue into it after you've already done a four ace trick. So it's kind of nice uh, that it's flexible in that way. But um, once you have the four aces removed from the pack, you also need to get a little pinky break secretly beneath the top three cards of the deck. Okay, so you can either use a pinky count to, to get those uh, or to get that break underneath those cards. Or uh, another you know, easy way of doing it is you just have the four aces face up on top of the deck. And as you're spreading them out you know, to display it to your audience, you're just gonna spread three more cards. And then as you close up the spread, you maintain a pinky break beneath those top three face down cards. So you're left with a seven card block, okay? Now, um, or you know, if you're gonna do the pinky count, just do it there and then place the aces on top of the deck and square up. You can explain that one at a time, each of the aces is gonna vanish. So at this point, all you're gonna do is lift up on all of the cards above the break, and then you're gonna singly peel off the ace of clubs on top of the deck. Now, pay attention to how I'm holding the right hand packet, okay? Because one thing that I'm doing is I'm kind of covering that front edge with my fingers there, just so that you know the thickness of that packet isn't you know completely visible. Now, keep in mind, things are gonna be kind of in motion, and it's very easy to disguise seven cards as four cards. So don't be overall, or don't be like overly paranoid about that, but it is a good idea to maintain a, a proper grip to minimize the chances of any flash or any suspicion. So, you know, take a look at how I'm holding this pack of cards. Uh, thumb at the back there. And here we go. So you're gonna pick up on those cards from the break. With your left thumb, you're contacting the middle of that topmost card and singly peeling it off onto the deck. After you do that, the remaining cards in your right hand packet, you're just gonna place right on top and then you do some kind of magical gesture of some sort. Now, you know, how you wanna exactly um, do that gesture is completely up to you. I just place on top and then I kind of do this. But you know, do whatever if looks cool to you or feels good to you. After you've done that, you're gonna say, look, just like that, that first ace vanishes. And you're gonna uh, spread each of the three remaining aces off singly. And keep in mind, this is your present situation. You have three face down cards now, followed by that face up ace. So you wanna be very careful not to flash that ace, that ruins the entire trick. So to do this, uh, you're in this position, you're gonna push off, push off. You, what you don't wanna do is you don't wanna push off like a block. You wanna be careful to push these cards off very singly. And a little uh, pro tip to help with doing that is um, with your leftmost fingers here, or your middle finger, ring finger, and pinky, you kind of, uh, normally when you hold a deck in mechanics script, it's something like this. Those cards are um, above, you know, or, or raised above the deck just a little bit. But when spreading the cards singly, you kind of lower those card, or those fingers just so that they barely hold onto the topmost card. And that way, no matter how hard you push, only one card should be able to move at a time. And that's gonna ensure that you don't flash at all. Okay, so you do you spread three aces, you show the backs. At this point, you can spread one more two cards just to show that it isn't on top of the deck or anything. After you do that, you bring the two cards back. This time, you're gonna need to hold a break underneath the top two cards of the deck. So you bring them back, you square up the remaining face down cards, maintain that break, and then you replace the aces back on top of the deck. Okay, now a little finesse point here. Instead of kind of uh, uh, bringing the aces back on top and then squaring up like this, I feel like it doesn't look nearly as good as if instead you kind of count the cards singly on top of the deck. And that way it's easier to get that um, packet that you need. 
okay? It requires less of a squaring up motion and it just looks nicer. Uh, but do it however you want. You're gonna be in this position again. So now you have a five card break, right? Do the same exact motion as the first ace. Now you're gonna be vanishing the second ace. You say, look, you didn't know what to expect the first time. We'll do it again, just like that. Spread the first card, spread the second card. And this time you can only spread one more card or else you're gonna flash that ace. So just keep that in mind, spread, spread. And then, you know, so this is kind of the choreography I like to do for this one. Spread, spread, and I push over the topmost card as I turn both hands palm down. So I'm showing that it's not on top of the deck and that I'm not like hiding it in my right hand packet or anything. Okay, once again, I like to count, count onto the deck, get that three card break nice and solid. And then the next one, uh, same motion again. And now, this time you can get a little fancy. Um, you can do this, um, This it's not called a paintbrush change. I, I don't remember, in the comment section below, let me know what this is called. There's a name for this where you kind of just have two cards here and then you, you quickly, uh, that was a terrible example. You kind of quickly just, uh, again, bad example. You do that. So it's kind of a more visual change than you normally would. And then you're left with a single card, which you then place on top of the deck. So same exact thing, but you can get a little bit fancier now that you only have two cards. You can do kind of a more visual version. Maybe it doesn't look great from this angle. Or just do exactly how you did before. Just do this and then immediately afterwards spread one card. Okay? Now that you have only one card left, uh, you know, there's a few options here. I like to do a pass, okay? And the reason for that is because it's kind of a nice visual way of doing it. If you do a pass, you're essentially taking... Uh, all of the this big chunk of cards into the middle of the deck. So that way at the end you can show very cleanly that there's nothing on the top, nothing on the bottom. I'm not going to cover the pass in detail in this video, but I've made a video on that in the past. You can do some of your own research to find all of the, the fine points on the pass. You can either do a classic pass or a Herman pass. That's completely up to you. Me personally, I like the classic pass. But after you do that pass, this is going to be the situation. All four of those aces are going to be in the middle of the pack and there's going to be a card, a uh, face down card in between each of them. All right, now here's a little uh, tip for you. After you do the pass, now you can very cleanly show the top of the deck, show the bottom of the deck, and you can even spread the cards out. And uh, the way that this works, you don't want to do a regular ribbon spread because then those face ups, uh, aces are gonna flash. But since those aces are face up, they naturally have a different curvature than all of the face down cards. And what this allows you to do is you can do kind of a dribble, a tabled dribble, like so. Similar to the Svengali principle, but if you do that, those face up aces won't show. They're gonna be uh, clumped behind a face down card. And that really doesn't take any practice. It's kind of just one of those things that works. Try it out and you'll see for yourself. But it's a nice way that you can give a very clean display of all of the cards at the end of the trick and show that the aces have all gone, okay? Now, um, let me show you a really cool way to bring those aces back, because, you know, when, in Magic, when you make something vanish, it's kind of good form to, to bring it back. It's good closure for the trick. So the way that this would work is uh, you're gonna do the exact same thing as you just did, but before you get into the apex aces, before you start vanishing each of the aces, um, what you would first do is you, you would actually turn this into kind of a multiple selection routine. So let's say you had a few spectators in front of you. This is a perfect thing, a uh, perfect effect to perform for them. Before you even get into the aces, before you even you know start vanishing them, you have three people each pick out a card. So they take out any three cards, doesn't matter. They memorize their own cards, uh, they remember it. And then what you need to do at this point is control each of the cards to the top of the deck. Now, I've talked a ton of about uh, card control on this channel in the past. I don't wanna go into detail on any control techniques now. I'll reference some videos in the description box below so you can do some of that homework. But control each of those three cards to the top of the deck in any way that you want. You can do it at the same time or you can do it one at a time. It's totally up to you. So one quick example, you could do a Hindu shuffle to control the first card. Um, and then after that, you, you know cut, maintain a break right above the selected card, have the second card replaced right there maybe do a double undercut, and then for the third one, you could do a pass or maybe just another Hindu shuffle. That's just one example. You could do a multiple card shift to have them, uh, each of the three cards brought to the top at the same time. Do, do, do what's you know most comfortable for you. But anyways, once you have the three aces on, or three selections on top of the deck, now you introduce the aces and say, okay, we'll get back to your cards later, but first let me show you a trick with these aces. And you do the th 
exact same thing that you just did. And in this case, what happens is you're essentially displacing each of the selections in between the aces in the process of making them vanish. So at the end of this routine, da, 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 that's the second one. Uh, let's do, ooh, that was kind of sloppy. Let's do the third one, just like that, gone. And then in the last phase after you do the pass, this is great, it's perfect, because now um, you show that the aces have vanished and whatnot, but then you say the, the aces actually haven't vanished. They actually went hunting. They went searching for the cards that you picked at the very beginning of this trick, because if we spread the cards out again, you'll notice that in the middle of the deck, we have each of those four aces, and, and those cards in between the aces just happen to be the very cards that you picked. So that's a nice like two-part effect. Actually, it's a three-part effect. It's a vanish, it's a reproduction, and then it's a location of some chosen cards. So really fun routine with that. You know, once again, like it's really flexible. You can do what you want with it. Have fun with it. You know, you can substitute any moves in that you would prefer to do, but uh, there's the general idea for you. I hope you like that. And uh, if you like this video, please do give it a like up. Uh, give it a like up, give it a thumbs up. Leave a comment below, subscribe to the channel, and all that good stuff. All right, see you in the next video.